Hello and welcome back to the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass. In this video, we will talk about the opioid withdrawal syndrome. This syndrome occurs after sudden withdrawal of opioids. And here we will explain it. We will also explain the neonatal withdrawal syndrome and we will explain the right way to stop opioids. So what is really opioid withdrawal syndrome? Well, it is a number of symptoms that arise after sudden withdrawal or dose reduction of opioids that are consumed by an opioid physically dependent person. So it is a number of symptoms that arise after stopping opioids in opioid physically dependent person. Now, what we mean by opioid physically dependent person? Well, physical dependence to opioid occur with the recurrent use of opioid until the body is physiologically adapted to that medication. Opioids trigger adaptation in cellular signaling pathways and also trigger neurotransmitter imbalance. And once withdrawn, this would disrupt the cellular signaling and the neurotransmitter imbalance that happen with recurrent use, this would be disrupted and this produce the withdrawal syndrome. And we will talk more about that in the next slides. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of withdrawal syndrome? Well, withdrawal syndrome present as drug craving, so the person crave for the drug. There is anxiety, restlessness, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, rhinorrhea, lacrimation, hyperventilation, muscle aches, tachycardia, and hostility. And these symptoms develop after minutes to several days following the withdrawal of the medication. And that is depend on the half-life of the opioid used. When the half-life of the opioid uh, ends and the opioid become inactive, that is when the withdrawal syndrome starts. Severity of these symptoms depend on the degree of the physical dependence the person have. Now, how the withdrawal syndrome occur? What is the mechanism behind that? Well, we have two mechanisms for the withdrawal syndrome. The first one is that with the recurrent use of opioids, there is adaptation in cellular signaling pathways that we talked about earlier, which when the opioids are withdrawn, the signaling pathways are disrupted between the cells and the withdrawal syndrome symptoms appear. The other mechanism is that when a person is physically dependent on, on an opioid medication, this person production of endogenous opioids like the endorphins and the encephalins is decreased because of the negative feedback coming from the exogenous opioids. So when the person is taking exogenous opioids, this would make negative feedback on the endogenous opioids produced by the person, like the endorphins and the encephalins. So their concentrations would decrease. And also the norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin is decreased in that person due to their suppressive effect on the central nervous system. So the opioids normally have suppressive effect on the central nervous system. And that's why the neurotransmitters like the norepinephrine, the dopamine, the serotonin would also decrease. So that means the endogenous opioids are decreased and the neurotransmitters are also decreased in the physically dependent person. So once that person stops the opioid medication, there is immediate deficiency of endogenous opioids with rebound increase in norepinephrine production. So as a reaction to the deficiency in uh, opioids in the human body, the norepinephrine would react by a rebound increase and this lead to withdrawal symptoms. 
So now the two mechanisms are the cellular signaling being disrupted and the norepinephrine production being so high, those both lead to withdrawal symptoms. Now after stopping the exogenous opioids, the endogenous opioid production returned to normal after 5 to 10 days. Now how we treat the withdrawal syndrome? Well, we replace the opioid of abuse with another opioid that is long acting. For example, we replace the morphine with the methadone. The morphine is short acting and it's the opioid of abuse and the methadone is the long acting one. We do that because the long acting opioids are easy to taper because they are associated with less severe type of withdrawal syndrome. Methadone is one of the most used replacement to stop opioids. It's a long acting type of opioid and the opioid of abuse is replaced with methadone, then methadone gradually tapered. Puprenorphine is also used commonly. With the replacement with methadone, there is also symptomatic management of the rest of the withdrawal syndrome symptoms. And the clonidine is also used to manage the symptoms of withdrawal syndrome. The clonidine is alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonist, which lead to decrease the norepinephrine. So it works to decrease the production of norepinephrine, which lead to less uh, symptoms of the withdrawal syndrome. Now regarding the opioid withdrawal syndrome, there is some information that is very valuable to know. So naloxone could be precipitate a severe type of withdrawal syndrome if used in patient who is physically dependent to opioids. So if a person who is physically dependent to opioid and we give them naloxone, they would have a severe type of withdrawal syndrome. That is because the naloxone is opioid receptor antagonist, which is used in opioid overdose if the patient developed respiratory depression. So naloxone is used to reverse the uh, overdose and to return the patient back to normal breathing once they have respiratory depression from the opioid overdose. Normally naloxone is used only if the patient is not physically dependent to opioids, they don't have dependence to opioids yet. It, it might be their first dose to opioids and they de developed respiratory depression to that. And we use naloxone to reverse that and return them back to normal. And if naloxone is used on physically dependent person, then they become, they would have severe type of withdrawal syndrome, as we mentioned, and they would become suicidal or homicidal and they might kill someone so when you need to use naloxone take the important measures to ensure safety so they don't hurt themselves or someone else when they have the withdrawal syndrome if you know that patient is physically dependent to opioids don't use naloxone on them when they develop respiratory depression manage them with advanced airway and ventilator support until they back to normal Finally, let's talk about the neonatal withdrawal syndrome. So this occurs after birth of infant to a mother that is physically dependent to opioids, uh, meaning she is taking opioids consistently and the opioids are passing to the baby. And when the baby is born, the opioid supplement is uh, stopped and they would have withdrawal syndrome uh, to that. The symptoms is a little different from the adult withdrawal syndrome is that there is high pitched crying, tremors, irritability, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. And non-pharmacological treatment include swaddling and breastfeeding of the baby. And pharmacologic treatment include opioids and clonidine. So if the non-pharmacological treatment failed, we use the pharmacological ones, which include the opioids and the clonidine. And with that, we're, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next videos.